James Comer, half-assed reporter, the guy on the bike. I'm here in Chelsea. We're gonna run in here to Matthew Marks and look at an exhibition by Mayoko Ito. Stay tuned. We'll uh, make our cursory sweep of the exhibition. First Veranda, 1983, Oil on Canvas. Well, I was not familiar with Miyoko Ido's work. And uh, I was peeking through the window here a couple of weeks ago and just thought this looked exquisite. This oil on canvas is 26 by 20 inches, and it's been getting a lot of press. This is untitled 1975, oil on canvas, 60 by 68. Miyoko Ito, 1918 to 1983, was born in Berkeley, California to parents of Japanese descent in 1942, a month before graduating from the University of California, Berkeley, she and her husband were sent to Tanferan, an internment camp south of San Francisco, under the executive order signed by Franklin Roosevelt. The following year, Ito was allowed to leave the camp and attend a graduate program at Smith College in Northampton, Massachusetts. She moved to Chicago and attended the School of the Art Institute in 1944, where she lived until her death in 1983. Okay, so, uh, well, I would say that uh, one of the things that attracted me to the work is the uh, incredibly subtle coloration here. This is Untitled 1970. Well, I'm interested to know that she moved to Chicago because I was kind of getting an echo of some of the Chicago imagists. Maybe not the Harry Who people, but there were some other interesting painters working in Chicago in the 50s and 60s. Heart of Hearts Basking, 1973, 44 by 31. I mean, Yoko's got a very uh, nice technique. Uh, and also, I would draw your attention to the uh, interesting way that she is using these tacks on her stretched canvases. 
they're saying that a lot of these works kind of recall interiors, landscapes, but there is no figure. Uh, I would say that it's also interesting that uh, her drawing is actually going back towards bare canvas and uh, it's just kind of dividing the planes, the painted planes. Rivers of pediment. 48 by 45. Well, as I was saying, Miyoko's got a very controlled technique, incredible brushwork. Uh, you know, her lines, her stripes are very controlled. And I like the, uh, the geometric aspect of some of these. Also, I think that uh, this puts me in mind of Mirandi in that uh, Miyoko is a tonal painter. So there's a lot of uh, tertiary colors. There's a lot of tinted and toned colors. There's very little white or the high end of the spectrum, very little low end of the spectrum. Everything is kind of, as I used to say, in the middle of the keyboard. But even within that light, close range, she gets a wonderful uh, sense of contrast. I think also her uh, use of pattern is interesting. E for Lisa, 1975. 48 by 46. Well, there is a, also, I think, a uh, great vocabulary of visual motifs, the kind of the framing things that she's using. I'm kind of, I've seen this motif in a couple of things. I wonder what that represents. And, uh, and also the, uh, the colored grades and the gradients, the fading from the rusty orange to the olive green into another kind of salmon pink. Untitled, number 126, 1970, 47 by 43. I'm, I'm going to read a little bit from the press release. Miyoko Ito began exhibiting her work in the early 1940s. During her lifetime, her work was included in important group exhibitions like the 1955 Carnegie International. Oh, this goes back to what I was saying. Chicago Imagist Art at the Museum of Contemporary Art Chicago in 1972 and the 1975 Whitney Biennial. She had one-person exhibitions at the Hyde Park Art Center in Chicago in 1971 and the Renaissance Society at the University of Chicago in 1980. More recently, the Berkeley Art Museum has had an exhibition of her work in 2017, a version of which traveled to Artist Space in New York the following year. Well, the work in this back gallery is a little darker. Let's see, so... It's titled Yellow Sea, 1959. So this is about 20 years earlier than some of the other work. This is around the 50 by 60. Okay. Oh, these are great. 
Uh, yeah. There's a lot going on underneath this, and it's almost like uh, Miyoko was kind of weaving layers of brush strokes over the top of other layers. And then would end up with a nice kind of beautiful pedimenti quilt. Okay, smile. Well, I can't find the uh, title for this one, but I would assume that this is also one of the paintings from the 50s. And some of these dark colors you would initially think are black, but they're not. They're dark blue, dark brown, dark green. Okay, we're gonna have to hurry through the rest of this because it's almost closing time. Act One by the Sea, 1955. There is a real uh, visceral sense of the, the craftsmanship, almost the obsessive rhythms of the brush strokes, the tacks, the whole way that she constructs her paintings. Flight into Landscape, 1960. Gosh, I would say this is probably about the most gestural of any of the pieces so far. And there's almost a, uh, a sense of a figure maybe coming out of a still life. Okay, Flight into Landscape. That could be a poetic metaphor. We'll look at some of her lithographs. Oh gosh, okay, so these are from 1949, 1950. You know, that's a uh, street scene in the city, but it's also very abstract the way she's laid that out in the rectangles. <laughs> Jenny's Pot Shop. Yeah, that makes me think of a Stuart Davis. Oh gosh, well, I just had a couple of young viewers from Korea <laughs> that recognize my voice. Okay, this is Easel and Table 1948. So this may be about the oldest painting in the show. This is 24 by 30. Again, you know, beautiful technique, but I'm also getting a little uh, echo, maybe a Paul Clay. Okay, we're gonna run to the last gallery. Well, we'll finish our tour looking at these two pieces.
untitled number 119, 45 by 43. Well, uh, yeah, the backstory of Maiko is pretty interesting, and uh, I think that she probably is one of these artists, hardworking, dedicated, worked for years, you know, totally pure and uh, serious, but uh, for some reason they never got the kind of attention they should have gotten. And, uh, well, even having a show at Matthew Marks 2023 does not really guarantee you that you're gonna be breaking through into the big time, but I think it's a move in the right direction. And uh, it's also nice to know that uh, Miyoko had somebody that's been around for the last, geez, 40 years, shepherding the estate, taking care of things. All of the work looks like it's in pretty good condition. And so they got some numbers on these, so there are obviously hundreds of these, and it's just nice to see that uh, Miyoko Ito is gonna be remembered because I think she's got a lot of very positive, wonderful, interesting ideas about painting. And uh, God, we're lucky to be able to see these. So this has been James Com reporting on Miyoko Ito here at Matthew Marks. You can like this, share, link it up to all your social media sites. Talk about it at your next opening. And you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms reviews and suggestions below as long as you say thank you Kate <laughs>